Wait, what is this split? Wait, hold up a sec. Am I seeing this right? STE? STE? <laughs> Interesting. The only reason, like, they're doing this kind of is... Like, in this type of circle... One way you can work this circle that's pretty easy and it could give you a lot of kills and control is to work down it this way. So this is something that I used to do too in a zone like this. So this is for all you competitive players or people that like the in-depth analysis side of comp competitive play. Okay, the center of circles around here, right? Chances are the circle is going to end the ending zone is going to be somewhere in this area, right? The ending of the game. Like, there's no there's no predicting the circle, right? So you can only go off of what the circle looks like in probability. So, probability-wise, the circle's going to end somewhere around here. So, with that being said, um, STE... From this position over here, okay, let's take that off. This blocks too much. So from this position here, they could work up and fight up to around here, right? But going from uphill down to this area in the late game is very hard to do, and you don't have much control. Um, it, it just come, it just becomes kind of. You, you just lose too much of your control and it becomes very difficult. So I think the reason why ST also had one player rotate up here is because this is also another pathing that you could do. Another way you can break into this circle is uh, you start here, you take a team fight with a team here. Um, this push is pretty easy, or I'm not going to say easy, I always say easy, but it's very doable. If you do it correctly, you, you, you can win this fight. And then from this position, obviously, you control this hillside. And then from this hillside, you can control this pocket area. There's like a little pocket here. I think DRS was in this position at the end of the game. Let's take a look. Yeah, DRS, right? See, this team actually got second place, right? So this pocket area is very strong for a circle like this as well. This pocket area that I circled in green kind of just lets you, it gives the team in this area gets control and usually is able to take out all of these teams here. Or they could, you know, push in if they have to. But that, that gets a little bit more risky. But this pocket area that I circled earlier, you could come up here. This is like, like I said, a very doable fight. Once you win this fight, you can control this ridge line. And from this ridge line, you also can control this area very well. You could take out this team and see. So what STE is thinking in this situation, or I'm assuming what STE is thinking, is the center of the circle, right? Somewhere in here. How? Do, what, what's our best options of entering into this circle? and increasing the chances of us winning the highest. So what I just drew in green is a very doable thing. And once you get into this pocket, you pretty much can, you know, fight your way in into this area around here. Once you get into this pocket, you can pretty much do all of this. And if you can survive all of this, like keep in mind, the circles will rotate randomly like this way or that way or whatever. But with this, it gives them a lot of options. So I think that's what they're trying to do. I think that's why this player is up here. So they're trying to keep both options open right now to see where the circle shifts. But, you know, SC comes and starts a fight with them and that kind of ruins their plans. So now you see in this next circle shift, how this rotation, like I said, you entry up into here, you control this area and can control this. You see how that works? So like I drew here, 
this is a very it's not super common but at least when i play competitive this is something i learned and realized just through experience and playing like this rotation's very strong and very powerful especially if you have a team that knows how to fight you you just pretty much you have access to like if you could do this on the initial one you could kind of pretty much have control of all of this as your next option when the next circle shifts right you, you you basically just have a easy way or not an easy way you have a good time of fighting into to all of this area in the green of course if the circle shifts like down this way really hard or something then ste or staying here to see which way the circle shifts and from here you know similar situation kind of it's a little bit more complicated to fight in this area and control things so right now all the comms are they're trying to isolate this player but at the same time they're they're not so so notice this is this is the thing with chinese teams like they know there's an isolated player but what they do is they don't just push them 2v1 or 3v1 what they do is they trap the enemy player there and they pin in all the angles so when the enemy teammates like the rest of de try and help or something potentially they could get a knock onto one of these players when one of these players tries to cross over to help or whatever the case might happen right because if you just go ahead and try and 2v1 this player and two players are very focused on him it makes it much easier for this team to come and help like there's no rush to knock this player instead you want to set up a defense where you make all of the enemy players useless like if you set up a defense and trap this player in so that these players can't help they're pretty much all kind of just useless and then eventually you could get this knock for free whereas if you rush here and just try and 2v1 him real quick you lose control or you have less control of what's happening over here because you're committing two players onto one player but here they're kind of making it like they're not fully committing but they're just setting up a like a, a a trap system and notice the player notice this player over here just like keeping a long sight line to make sure he could see any information if any players try and cross over at any point here right so this player here is holding a very crucial line and see how all four players are playing separate you have one player over here one player over here one player just i think he he went over off to the offside on the back just so he has a different angle and he's not just playing the same position as this guy so dr de is committing three players onto one person so all he does is just readjust and you see how the three players that they try to chase him down it's like a very bad push at that point this is why you don't want to do 3v1s because if that one player is smart enough to just play defensive and back up and the rest of his team is a good enough team they will offer the correct support lines to make your three-man push like very like useless so i don't see how sunan got him okay so so they heard him he said so they 2v1 him real quick i think and now you see how three players are trapped in one building there's no off angles there's no they didn't leave a player behind they didn't like have anybody like push over to the outside 
Like, they can maybe send two players in here to entry because it's a close range fight. And then one player go out here, right? And then the second STE come over here to try and help or find different angles. This player on the outside's in an excellent position to get a free knock. But they didn't do that. They just committed three players into one building. And it's not even DE. Like, I see so many teams do this. So many top-level global teams even do this. This is why, like, we we also... I did a PMGC East scrims casting match, right? And we saw BTR. We saw Infinity. We saw a lot of teams all do this group up together and push one player type of thing. And it just... Against a stronger team, like, it just does not work. <laughs> Now imagine like as soon as this player jumps out, right? If they just had one player come out to this side on the outside, right? Instant knock right here. So you see he's at the wall, right? He's at the wall right there. He's out here. He's at the wall out here. If they just committed the push and put one person out here earlier. That's an easy knock. And realize how Dao Shi has been here since the very beginning of the fight. You guys realize that? This guy was here the whole entire time. So like their setup is planned from the very beginning. Before the fight even happens is what I'm saying. This is what makes Chinese teams so much better. So it doesn't matter if it's FPP or TPP. This is how they play. They set up the angles. They play separate from each other. They, they don't group up. Unless it's 100% necessary, right? See, this player is already setting up out here way before anything even happens. So let's just say DE did something different, right? Who knows what DE could have done different? DE could have done a lot of things differently. But the player on the outside is just in a position to flank all of a sudden. Or he's in a position to catch, and catch the enemy player trying to flank them or something like that, right? So like all of this, like the just the setup from the very beginning, this approach to this fight is just, is just this is what makes Chinese teams better. This is a very specific fight situation in the city, but the way they think and position themselves applies to everything else they do also. Just like I said, the Chinese meta is one man army. Every player is a one-man army, but it synergizes together overall. See, now they're pushing together because it's, it's just they have here they have the man advantage. It's a 4v3 and it's a close range building fight. But even as they're pushing together, they're not like committing four people next to each other. They're using two people here at most. One person's on the outside angle, the other's at a different outside angle. See, one person's outside on this angle, one person's outside on this angle. They commit two together to push. They still don't even commit like three or four people next to each other to push. <laughs> Yeah, it's like playing chess with four pieces, exactly. And each each member of the Chinese team can play a different role at any... Well, I mean, some Chinese teams are better than others at doing that, but um, each player on the team is very flexible, too, in the sense of depending on what position on of the map they're in, they do a different thing.